We're doing something a little bit different today. We're going on a road trip to Southeast Missouri. We're going to visit our friend Luke and his family, and we are going to get a little tour of his farm as well as see the eclipse because they are right in the path of totality. Since it is eclipse weekend and we only finalized this little adventure a few weeks ago, every hotel and Airbnb in the 200 mile radius of, of Luke's place was completely booked and were way overpriced. So we ended up finding an RV that we could rent. We arrived right as it was getting dark. So the next morning is when we got to see more of the farm. Luke, his wife, Melissa, and their four kids had been out of town at a wedding for the last 10 days. And they arrived at their house back from their trip just a few hours before we got there. I'm gonna eat it. Okay, good. Don't drink enough. Don't wait, just eat. It's good. Okay. So it was super nice of them to invite us to watch the eclipse at their home, even though the timing was definitely not ideal for them. It's always hard to leave your farm. And then when you get home, there is a lot of things to do and it can be a little bit overwhelming. So we tried to help them a little bit the next day to get caught up on some of the things that they were not able to do when they were gone. They were harvesting some of their snap peas and just to put this into perspective, they are in the same growing zone as we are. We're both in 6B. Their snap peas are ready to be harvested super early because they planted them in January in their high tunnel. <laughs> it's like a kale tree. Yeah. <laughs> I can hear myself getting healthier. <laughs> mm. We're coming back. This is good. Mm. <laughs> that was a lot of bitter pear. <laughs> After we finished up with the kale, Luke wanted us to try a very cool new garden tool that he has. It's a wheel hoe. You know, the, the unit itself is heavier and that weight, that weight helps. You know, I already have a glazier wheel hoe but this one was quite a bit easier to use than my glazier wheel hoe. We just took this off 10 seconds ago and we've got the cultivator on. Um, 42 inch wide? Yeah. Wow. And I'm gonna put the furrower on first. Furrow. Okay. And this is gonna throw soil both left and right. Yeah. We actually planted our potatoes just a couple of weeks ago with a shovel and a pickaxe. So we got to see the contrast between that and using the furrower and the hiller, which covers that area right back up. So that was really fun to be able to test that tool out. After that, we went back to their house to start watching the eclipse. None of our family has ever seen a full eclipse before, so it was a very new experience for us. Very subtly, it got darker and colder, and it was just sort of eerie and crazy. It looks like I have a filter on my camera, but that was just how it was. Fire! Fire! Yes, oh, 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 look! Oh! 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 Oh, it's starting to come back out. Mom, can you tell me this? Yes. <laughs> we were all in awe of the eclipse. It was so cool. I wish it could have lasted like 10 times longer. When we hit totality, you could hear all of the crickets get louder and the stars came out. We also set up a time-lapse camera on their bees so you can see them all coming in and then it gets dark and then they all come back out of the hive again. Once the eclipse was over, Luke and Melissa, they were kind enough to give us a tour of the farm. We are excited to bring you guys along with us so that you can see all of the cool things that they're doing. Well, this is our favorite room in the house. The only one we've spent any money on and the place we spend most of our time, the place every guest wants to see and it's our life. We love it. This is our fourth, fourth farm build out. The last one we did on leased ground and we lived in a 
fifth wheel trailer that we pulled on the property, kind of following Salatin's model of you don't need land to farm, you need a farmer. We learned a lot. That was out in the high deserts of Arizona and loved that project. But this one is ours, our land. We bought this and kind of found it as a diamond in the rough, um, overgrown, the ground not used, more dirt than soil. <laughs> We've been working on that. We're kind of a market stead, where homestead meets market garden. Yeah, this is not a full market garden. In the past, we've done like full-scale market garden where that is our income. Right now, this is kind of like homestead meets market garden where we're trying to close a lot of our loops in terms of just finances to pay off what we have, but we're not like panicking, trying to make sure ends meet with the vegetables themselves. We sell plant starts, we sell lettuce, we sell you know, produce and all things from like on that. farm. We don't go to farmers yeah. markets. We have people come to us. We've done the farmers market thing, and it wasn't for us. Especially not in this stage anymore. of life. With <laughs> yeah. A bunch Yo, of these we've... things running around, and yeah. just too much, too much take away from the time, family and farm. So, and we found that people love coming on farm and seeing what you're doing, and they get excited about your vision and your lifestyle just as much as they do the produce. And it makes people feel like they're buying a product from something they believe in. It's more than just food. It's a way of life that people appreciate. This is our big greenhouse. It's a 30 by 76, I believe. It's a Zimmerman high tunnel. Um, and if you've ever grown in a tunnel, most people who grow in tunnels never grow outside of a tunnel anymore. Um, it's every production's higher, yields better. You can have a lot more control over the environment. You can keep it a little bit cooler in the summer. You can keep it a lot warmer in the shoulder seasons. So there's a lot of really big advantages, particularly in areas like this. We're in Southeast Missouri, where we have a lot of spring rains, um, where too much rain actually stunts your crops. And so when you keep the rain off of it, you actually can have a consistent yield. And when it's raining, you can actually still be harvesting and actually working your garden. So a lot of market gardeners really like Salanova lettuce. These are all Salanovas. Um, the reason they like them is they they're a little bit unique. They have a decent flavor. This was a spring mix. This side, this is a Skyfos lettuce, the red over there. That's gonna, that's been a cut and come again. So that's already been cut on twice and it's almost ready for a third cutting. These are sugar snap peas. We planted these on January 2nd. The kids and I make this part of our homeschooling curriculum where they are required to do what I call farm block. So we pick an hour a day and we come up here and whatever projects we get lined out on, that's what we do. So they get to kind of go through each stage. So they planted these and now they get the excitement a couple months later of harvesting them. These are my babies. Every spring starting in January, I start my waves of different things. This year we're trying to do a lot of selling starts. So all of these will be sold as starts. Um, but my peppers down here were planted a couple months ago and peppers take a long time. So I always plant them before anything else. I've got waves of kohlrabi come in. My herbs here. I don't remember what all I planted. Dill is on that side and then this is the Chamomile. Is this tunnel heated at all? No, we have not done any heating in this tunnel. Here in the dead of winter, we put bars here and you can see the hoops are still on for frost cloth. So through the, we've had several hard frosts in January, February and had stuff growing on this table. Um, we did actually put heaters underneath, okay. but it's not heating for the whole greenhouse. We just heat, we'll put the space heaters under there and that's why he put the plastic where it goes all the way to the ground. And that holds in enough heat to really do some good without a big electricity bill. So. If you're trying to be efficient and not have to heat your whole greenhouse, you just create a little micro climate inside the greenhouse and it works really well. Each of these growing blocks is roughly 10,000 square feet. So there's one, two, three, four. So 10,000 square feet is just under a quarter acre. It's right at about 20 rows, which is about the same size as Becky's garden, your garden. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we tried to push the limits on these tomatoes and when we were out of town, they didn't get covered properly. And so they're a little stunted and kind of ugly, so don't show them. They'll probably bounce back. So then the other thing we're, we're doing, like a little pilot program, is quite a bit of strawberry. So there's about a thousand strawberry plants here um, and we'll sell some strawberries, hopefully a bunch. And that's the pilot program to where we might transition to doing a lot more like you pick at strawberries here in the future. In typical market garden fashion, it's about a 30 inch bed top. So we have a couple uh, high tunnels here. These are the 16 foot um, farmer's friend classic tunnel um, with uh, the pro, the lift kit. And so it brings them up a little bit. But the thing that I do is I stretch them to 18 foot. Um, so rather than 16 foot, they're stretched a little bit wider. Um, that lowers them a little bit, but because they have the lift kit, it still does fine. Mm -hmm. And it allows more border room between your, the edge of your plastic and where your bed might go. So you actually have a little bit of a walkthrough um, that I've found for me works really good. This is constantly like flipped and turning. So like right now, 
it's strawberries, but we had intercropped in between the strawberries. We had kale, we had kohlrabi all down the center that's already been harvested out this year. We have Swiss chard, broccoli or bro broccolini, whatever varieties that was there. How many onions are over there right now? Uh, roughly 6,000. 6,000 onions. Roughly, give or take. Roughly, okay. Give or take maybe a thousand. I don't yeah. know. So we do kind of some mixed homestead style, fun, I don't know, goofy things here. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Awesome. Thing. We're, yeah, we're doing some cover crop. Um, this is like a, a cover crop by Green Cover. This this tall stuff that you're looking at is oats. In there is like some vetch and some peas and some other brassicas that has overwintered as a cover crop. I'll I'll then chop, drop, and let this decompose. And then I'm probably in this block going to do just a block of sunflowers. I can choose to harvest those with an all crop, which I'll show you a little bit later, or just sell them as a stock but it's just a fun little thing over here that's lower that you see weeds through that's actually wheat and very poor ground and so i have done zero fertility to it but then i'm going to harvest that grain um, with the all crop and we use that wheat uh, to make bread and pancakes and everything under the sun so you did your first harvest last year yes first harvest and off of that harvest how many how much did you, you talk to me like in bushels what it was but how many i don't know I didn't really, I didn't scale it off, but it was probably like, like five or six hundred pounds. Five or six hundred pounds off of, off of about ten thousand square feet. Okay. Yeah. It, it it surprises me that off of that little ground you uh -huh. get that much wheat. You can get a like, lot. People don't think that, like that's awesome. It doesn't so take a lot of space it, makes to makes do it. Well it. Yeah. worth it. Yeah. Absolutely. Very cool. Um, we also did oats and play with oats a little bit. So all these are cover crops slash harvest crops because I'm going <laughs> to harvest it kind of high. I'm not actually taking the straw, so I'm harvesting it pretty high up and I'm just taking that grain head. Yeah. And then when you take that grain head, there's still some biomass in there that can decompose. The only downside is it's not like nutrient rich. It's not carrying your nitrogen because it's already gone too dry. Yeah. Um, when you're harvesting your grains, you are harvesting your grain very, very dry. You want to have like less than 12% uh, moisture content within your grain. So right here, I'm going to, with this elderberry, we're going to do a little bit of a hedgerow for wind protection. Um, we've got pretty good cover on the majority of the garden from this big building behind you. The greenhouses are adding some some wind breaks and some cover. So this side, I wanted to do the same thing. So hedgerow, this is going to be a permanent hedgerow of the elderberries. Um, it'll get pruned back in the winter, but it'll stay kind of like a permanent bed structure. Some potatoes are in these rows right here. They're kind of dry farmed right now, but they're, they're, they'll get irrigation to them. <laughs> and then we've got several beds that are going to be like uh, squash and uh, whatever else is on the list, okra. There's a list and a plan. Check out seatime.us you know, to create your plan. Um, yeah, for those who don't know, I do work for Seatime. Um, so uh, we got garlic here, and I think that covered everything here. Silage tarp is on right now. That just went on a couple weeks ago. What I'm trying to do here is I'm going to kill off a lot of the native species of grass because I'm not trying to grow native grasses right here. I'm trying to turn this into like grain production, more veg stuff. This block, I'm actually going to plant with a specific pollinator mix for uh, forage for my bees. We do some beekeeping here and I want to draw as many bees to this garden as possible fairly early on. Oh, yeah. This block that is in a cover crop right there has already been grazed down by the sheep. That 10,000 square foot is probably gonna be sweet corn. And so okay. in the next week, I'm gonna go ahead and um, turn that under. This is gonna get moved over there and that'll be a block of sweet corn for the summer. Cool. Welcome to the farm stand. We are in process of building out. We're not done. The vision for this place is for people to be able to come and buy their produce. They would always have their produce in. So we'll probably be selling meats and everything, but right now we're just doing produce that we produce. You got a mix in there already. I didn't realize that before. Oh yeah. Man, where are we working farm kind of? Greens. Mmm, delicious. And then there's kind of like a food transparency piece um, to where you can see like where the wash and pack is. So like we really believe in people should have the right to know um, what's going on their food, how it's processed, that people are washing their hands, that people are doing things correctly. And so we want to have that like transparency of what you're getting. So Luke's going to show us how he cleans the wheat. Using what? Using this homemade setup. What do you what do you what do you what do you call this if you had to give it a name? I really like the homemade setup. That term is perfect because uh, that's exactly what it is. Uh, it's a seed cleaner of sorts. When I first saw it, I thought like that's a cool kids game. Yeah, it's a gumball machine. Um, it's the wheat gumball machine. So what we're doing here is we are creating a suction with a vacuum, and so we have a shop vac that's here. 
and then we have a little bit of an adjustment. There's a hole right here, and you can adjust your airflow for where the air is flowing just by kind of moving this. So if you have a heavier seed, you want it pulling less or more. If you want it pulling more, you cover this up and not vent as much air. But it's sucking from this vacuum, all the chaff is gonna get hopefully sucked up this area as the seed is falling. And when the seed is falling, it's gonna be twirling here as it falls down, and that's where the chaff gets sucked into this side. That's terrible. That pulls out most of the chaff. It's significantly cleaner than what was in it. Like if you can see all the like chaff and sticks and stuff. Um, but you can always run it through a second time, which is typically what we do um, is like two or three times. So the other thing you can do if you do buy a combine is you can clean your combine really good and run it back up the, tr the, the straw walkers. Oh, yeah. And you just dump it back up the straw walker as the combine's going because the combine is designed to actually blow a lot of that chaff oh, off. Yeah. But this is going to be like a final like seed chaff replacement. When I actually harvested that wheat, um, it wasn't, wasn't perfect. See, so it didn't grab that that time. Okay, Running one thing, yeah. One chaff, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But again, I mean, it's it's your food. I mean, it's you want it to be clean. Right. You know, it, this isn't great storage, obviously. Like, I think that's clear. Like, you can actually mm -hmm. vacuum seal drums, could freeze it, and, and try to make sure that there's no weevils or anything like that. These oats have the holes on them, so mm -hmm. you weren't really planning on I've not made oatmeal, them. no. Um, you can just grab the whole oats, hole and all, and feed it to animals, chickens, mm -hmm, anything like that. Mm -hmm. if you, um, just want to subsidize your feed bill. If you look at what I have into this, so I bought $16, $16 a bag of whole oats. That got me started on 10,000 square feet of oats. $16 mm -hmm. bag yielded this much. I have a $150 into my combine. <laughs> this is it. This is it, the glorious <laughs> combine. <laughs> <laughs> Here's how it works. You um, hook up this unique system up to a regular tractor, pull behind tractor. That's, PTO, that's yeah. a PTO guard, so it's PTO okay. driven. And this is in the center of your tractor. So your tractor wheel is here, so you're mm -hmm. offset pulling it, kind of yeah. like a, a, a baler. This is the, the wheel that's the, the thresher that's pushing that wheat onto the sickle cutter, then goes up and then it drops in and it gets um, thrown into this big old wheel. And this wheel is basically spinning and threshing out and separating the the seed head. So that's spinning just like crazy that's fast. That's spinning very fast. Yeah, okay. Um, and knocking and beating everything down. And it's what it's doing is beating the straw, the, the, the grain down. Okay, okay. And then all the straw Comes is getting thrown like here, here oh, okay. into okay. the back. Okay. And then it's shaking. And oh, this okay. is shaking, and so what it's doing is these teeth are kind of up this way. This is what's called the straw walkers, yeah. and it walks the straw up. So it okay. pushes it that way, pulls under, hmm. pushes it, pulls it, pushes hmm. it, pulls it, and it walks it all the way up. And as it's doing that, any other seed heads are dropping down and yeah. getting put back into that loop. Oh, okay. And then it comes all the way up those straw walkers and then gets spit out on the other end. Okay. So then the wheat, it's just right under here. Like a, on the basement level, kinda. Yes, and then it's <laughs> it basically is going through that drum um, on that basement level, and then it gets processed kind of on that other end okay. through these like cups that yeah. are like throwing it up, and yeah. then it spits it down into your hopper over there. Uh -huh. It's still the same PTO. You crank a lever, and that's what is gonna engage your auger with a belt as it tightens that belt, and then your auger will spin when you need to empty your, so your hopper. Okay. This size farm, small homestead, hobby, stuff <laughs> we don't even fill the hopper once oh, okay. and then we put okay. it into storage yeah. after we finish the job because okay. i'm only doing ten thousand square oh, okay. feet okay on old equipment cool. they're designed for you know the average joe you know farmer yeah. like it's designed for a working man thing yeah. so yeah. you can figure out parts you can make parts you can get creative a little yeah. macgyvery you yeah. got to know your yeah. way around a shop to be yeah. able to fix them but yeah. uh you can do it and so yeah. um, oh, all crop harvester Alice we, Chalmers. We, we watch the video and it'll, it will do pretty much all crops. We are officially on our way home and it is getting dark. We left a little bit later than we anticipated, but we we're having such a good time that we ended up staying a little bit longer. 
and it was awesome to be able to see the eclipse. Definitely worth the drive. Also really cool to be able to tour their farm and to be able to see some of the things that they were doing and the way that they farm at gardens.